Spirit moving on, make oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Holy Spirit. Hi there, I salute you in Jesus' name. It's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. Come on, check your faith level now. Check your faith level. See if you are alive. You are among the living. Check if you are among the living. Check if you are among the living. Come on, pinch yourself and see if you are among the living and start praising God. Start thanking Him. Come on now. All again, spirit move, spirit move over me, spirit move, hallelujah, come on, check your feet level, check your feet level, oh my goodness, it's good to be alive, it's good to be alive and hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, invite your friends, your loved ones. All right, do me a favor, just invite your friends. I'm doing that right now. Invite your friends, loved ones, and let us share the word of God. Be a blessing. Let's have a word of prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, we are thanking you this morning. We are grateful for another day you have given unto us. It is not how good we are, it is not how wonderful we look, it is by your grace and mercy. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. We are just grateful to you. We are just grateful to you for all that you have done and still doing. We are just grateful. We are just grateful. We thank you. Many thanks. Many thanks, billion, trillion thanks. We cannot thank you enough. If we have a thousand tongues, we cannot thank you enough for all that you have done for us and still doing. May your name be praised. May your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, if you are joining me this morning, this is Faith Moment. We're just thanking God for another day that he has given us to bring the word of God to his people and to the world. Bible tells us that the, the world does not know the Holy Spirit but you know the Holy Spirit because he dwells with you and he lives in you and so we need to tell the world and introduce the Holy Spirit to the world today I want to talk to you about the fact that the Holy Spirit delivers from the power of the flesh the Holy Spirit delivers when the Holy Spirit lives in you he delivers you from all that fleshly thinking and all that fleshly lust or all that fleshly things all that that comes with the flesh the holy spirit will deliver you god bless you every one of you patricia Margaret, sister mercy god bless you praise the lord from india god bless you i hope the family is doing well god bless you say hello to pastor ravi for me love you love you love you god bless you I want to talk to you about the fact that the Holy Spirit delivers. The Word tells you and I that the world don't know the Holy Spirit, but you know the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He lives with you, He dwells with you, and He lives in you. So therefore, we need to show the world, introduce the Holy Spirit to the world. 
Yes, the Holy Spirit is not known. And many circles of the Christendom or the Christian people don't even know the Holy Spirit because we succumb to the pressures of this earth without allowing the Holy Spirit to help us and lead us. Many, many are they that live in a life of the world. Of course, you know, we, we see you on Sundays in church. With, you know, with your holy self and all that good stuff, which is good. But beloved, um, I'm wondering, based on the things that you hear on a daily basis, if indeed the Holy Spirit is dwelling with you and living in you. Many people are just throwing in the towel. Many Christians are throwing in the towel because we don't allow, we, we, we don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling with us. Mother Lawrence, love you. All right, we don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling with us and much more even living in us. And so uh, when we're going through challenges of time or of this world, you know, facing all these obstacles and challenges of the world, we, we, we act in the fashion of the world. But the Bible tells you and I, that, beloved, that the world, Sam, God bless you, the world don't know the Holy Spirit. The world does not know the Holy Spirit, but you know the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He dwells with you and He lives in you. He lives in you. And so therefore, you must introduce the Holy Spirit to the world. You who know the Holy Spirit, beloved, you know the Holy Spirit. Because since you gave your life to the Lord Jesus, and if you don't know, perhaps you don't know, because we see also that in the, in the days of Paul, some of the disciples didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. So, so it, it's, it's, it, it's not surprising that you may not know the Holy Spirit. You, you were led to, to giving your life to the Lord, but that stopped right there. That stopped there, and it shouldn't have stopped right there, because... The next step for you was to for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit baptize you. And then you you will be living a life where you are you are in this world, but like Jesus says, you are not of the world. So that you don't you don't be you don't be acting and crying out as others or the world do. Are you listening? Um if, for example, you are, what that means is being in the world but not of the world, meaning, for example, you are, you are an American uh, living in Africa, okay, some country in Africa. Well, you, are, you may be living in that particular country, but you are not of that country. Are you listening? You have a place to go. Or, for example, like those... Africans living in America, they have a place to go. It's not your place. It will not be your place. You have a place unless that is where you want to stay for life. And so what Jesus says, we here, we are here, but we're not of this place. And so therefore, we need to have this understanding and introduce the Holy Spirit to the world, this dying world. This dying world, we have to introduce the Holy Spirit. Beloved, it, it, the time has come that we leave just the, the confines of the church premises, all right, and, and go out and, and tell the world, introduce the Holy Spirit to the world. Because the Bible says that the world don't know the Holy Spirit. Shannon, God bless you. Patricia, God bless you. All right, the Holy Spirit, you know the Holy Spirit. The world don't know the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk to you today about the fact that the Holy Spirit delivers from the power of the flesh. The world is a, is a, is a fleshly place. It's a fleshly place. And uh, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And so we need to introduce the Holy Spirit so that He can help the world. Are you listening? So that we ourselves don't fall into 
the 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 trance of the world patricia god priscilla god bless you are you listening so that we don't fall into the trance of the world why because the holy spirit he is the only person who can deliver the holy spirit is the only person who can save in this dispensation beloved we have left that dispensation of the law into the dis dispensation of grace and uh, we need to activate our faith in God by receiving, believing and receiving the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. He did away with your sins. Beloved, there is no sin. You are not living in the life of sin, sinfulness. If, according to the word of God, and you got, if you don't believe, you see, this, this is the key, believe. What, what we are struggling with, what the enemy is fighting you, beloved, what the enemy is fighting you so hard is your belief in that which Jesus did for you. That is what he's fighting. That is what he's fighting. He's fighting, he's fighting your, 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 your personality. He's fighting for you to Ask yourself, do, 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 are you really a child of God? Beloved, that is the same thing he tried to do to Jesus. That's the same thing. If he had gotten Jesus to fall, where do you think you and I will be? If he had gotten Jesus to fall, hi, beloved, God bless you. If, you, if he had gotten Jesus to fall, because he came to Jesus trying to let Jesus question himself, Am I indeed the, the son of God? All right? Because when he comes, he comes to question your credibility. Now, the only person who can doubt your credibility is you. Beloved, trust me, people say this, and then, you know, your credibility is on the line. Your credibility is on the line. Listen, the whole world can change their mind against you in a minute. The whole world can turn against you in a minute. It doesn't matter how good you have been to them and how nice you have been to them. Human beings are very, very, very funny. Very, very funny. They can turn in a second. Now, what we read in the scripture give you and I something to reason about, something to think about. Look at Peter being with Jesus. And even assuring Jesus that he would never disappoint him. He would never, you know, leave him alone. He would never be, you know, he would, he would be with him. He would kill for Jesus. But the, beloved, when the time came, Peter said, I don't even know him. That's human beings without the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's human beings without the Holy Spirit. But you see the same Peter, after the Holy Spirit has come upon him, he became a different person. He became the real person that he's supposed to be. So, beloved, don't, don't, you know, worry yourself about the credibility, your credibility in the mouth and in the minds of people. No, you need to know who you are. You need to know who you are in Christ. Are you listening? And so the devil comes only to check, you know, to question your credibility. Now, if you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, yes, he will still come. Remember, let's start with Jesus. He came to Jesus asking him, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, you see, you see the point in which he was coming. He was, he was putting a doubt in the credibility of Jesus in, in the mind of Jesus for Jesus to begin to question himself. Oh, I, I, what, I, what, 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 am I really the son of God? Yes. Knowing exactly, the devil knowing exactly that, yes, Jesus is the son of God. Beloved, that is what he does. That is what he does. So therefore, whatever you are going through, don't doubt yourself that you are not a child of God. People, I'm telling you, he will come through people. Listen, if Peter was so close, if Peter was that close to, to, to uh, Jesus, and yet... Satan, all right, came into him for him to even try to stop Jesus from whatever he has to, he has to do. 
then know that he satan can use anybody including the the very spiritual quote unquote person that you are even depending on because people will tell you things and sometimes if if the holy spirit really lives in you and you have come to know who you are it makes you question do they really know what they are saying do they really know what you are what they are saying i, I am i am not in that place of of um, of just be, believing anything that anybody tells me especially in the in the in the office of the of the prophet the office of the prophet because that is where most of the time we get stuff you know concerning you know your life and and the things that um you know somebody believe that you know god has said concerning you are you listening so this is very important for you to understand and so i want to talk to you today for you to have this drill in you that the holy spirit delivers the holy spirit delivers from the power of the flesh Satan is nothing but the flesh. Are you listening? Go with me now. Go with me now to, let's look at some scriptures. Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. I'm talking to you for you to check your, yourself today concerning the Holy Spirit dwelling with you and living in you there are two two things that the holy spirit that comes to do he dwells with you that's what jesus says he says he will dwell with you and he will live with you chapter 8 romans verse 1 there is there is therefore now no condemnation no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus no condemnation no condemnation are you listening now there is no, therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Not according to the flesh of Satan, but according to the spirit, the Holy Spirit. There's no condemnation. Now, if there's no condemnation, beloved, if there is no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, then who is he who condemns you or try to question your credibility? Who? Those, that is the self-righteous spirit. Are you listening? Now there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So ask yourself then, who is he who condemns? Scripture says, is it not God who justifies? If you are justified by God, God has justified you. Alison, God bless you. Shannon, God bless you. If God is justifying you, then who is he? That is why, see, it's a personal thing that number one, before you even go on to try to do that, it's a personal thing between you and God. It's a personal thing. Are you listening check yourself the holy spirit is with dwelling with you and in you now the scripture says there's no condemnation so you why are you allowing yourself why are you allowing yourself to condemn you we're going to look at some scriptures that is what the word of god is telling us unless you don't believe it Beloved, unless you don't believe it, but the word of God must be what you have to walk on. You have to live on. You have to sleep on. You have to eat in. You, I mean, it's, that, is, that is, should be the completeness of your life. So it comes with believing it. And that is where I said earlier, the devil comes to fight you your belief of the word of god your belief your belief your belief how much do you believe the word of god or you think it's some story that somebody wrote it doesn't work you know no because well you know i tried to see it and then it's not working it's not working and all that kind of all, no 
Beloved, the devil only comes to fight your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you. Jesus didn't die for himself. He died for you. All right. So now the scripture says in Romans 8, 1, now there is now no condemnation to those, to those. Watch this now. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? If you are not in Christ Jesus, please stay with me because by the end of this broadcast, I am going to lead you to him. To those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Patricia. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, for the law of the, of the spirit of life in Christ, life in Christ Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Beloved, life in Christ has made you free. And if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. So why are you living a free life mindset today and tomorrow? You know, you, you face a little challenge and then back to that place. Beloved, that is not the way to live your life. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Bible says that, that look, 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 look. Oh my goodness. God's word are yea and amen. That's it. That's it. Yes and amen. Beloved, stick with it. Stick to it. Look at verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did, did so by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful, in the sinful of a sinful flesh on account of sin. And therefore he condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. And if, if God has condemned sin in your flesh, then beloved, you, you don't have no sin in your flesh, in your flesh, in your members. There's no sin. Don't be walking around with badges of the fact that you are a sinner. I am no longer a sinner. According, oh my goodness, are you getting this revelation? McDonald, God bless you. Are you getting this revelation? If, watch this now, beloved, see, the Holy Spirit will help you to understand the word of God. Are you listening to me? If you don't see, poor understanding of the word will lead you to your destruction. I am telling you this as a servant of God and as a co-laborer as you. I am no different from you. I am no different. I cry the same way you cry. I take shower the same way you take shower. I eat the same way you do. But you need to understand the word of God. If not, I'm telling you, you will live in fear, guilt, and condemnation, and you will never amount to anything. Your life will be nothing but struggle, 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 because you'll be struggling too. Beloved, your current situation, your current situation, okay, of whatever you're going through now, does not justify the, 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 your, the, your end. Are you listening? The enemy will use even pastors to let you think that you have come to your end. Please don't believe that. Believe the word of God. Believe the word. Believe the word of God. I am telling you this. Now, therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That's number one. Ask yourself, am I in Christ? If I, if therefore I'm in Christ, then who is he who condemns me? You don't have to condemn yourself. 
thinking that, well, I have failed. I couldn't do this and all that. Please, there's no condemnation. If God is not condemning you, then why do you have to condemn yourself or even allow anyone to condemn you? Meanwhile, they themselves are not 100% correct. It doesn't matter. Beloved, it doesn't matter. Whoever they call, which title they give themselves in the pulpit, it don't matter. You are not. Are you listening to me? There's no condemnation for those who, who are in Christ, who walk, who walk according, who, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Watch verse 2 again of Romans chapter 8, if you are just joining me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Has made me free. Beloved, are you free? Are you? Ask yourself this. See, my ministry is a ministry of challenge. I may not be speaking some sweet stuff for to tickle your funny I, I come to put some stuff in your head for you to think about it that's what my ministry is I come to to put stuff in your head that's who the apostles were think about it bring to bring you to that that self-awareness are you listening to me that's what my ministry is about so sometimes you know, you may not see a lot of people in, because what they are looking for is not on this platform. I am not here to give you some sweet words and let you. I'm here to give you the word of God. The one that when you grab it yourself, no one can take it from you. That is what I'm talking about. That is what my ministry is. Because what I have, you cannot. You can't scare me with nothing else, beloved. You cannot. Not after after getting this word in my members. No, no, you cannot. Don't. It, it. The other day I was I was um, sharing with one of my sons in the ministry, a prophet, and I said, "Listen, I am not a prophet. I don't call myself a prophet. But when God speaks, I hear. So if you ever come trying to prophesize what I'll do to you, you have no idea." And he said, hey, daddy, that's for you. I know you, so. Yes, don't. Are you listening? Beloved, the Holy Spirit, oh my goodness. When you get hold of him, when he is with you, he will lead you. Remember what Jesus says. Jesus says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. All truth. Not some. Not some truth. Beloved, maybe you have heard this also. The truth will set you free. Because if you are not free, you will, you will be chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing. You'll be like chasing the wind. Have you tried chasing the wind? Do you think you can ever catch the wind? Until you come to that place, you come to yourself. I like what the Bible says that when the when the, the, the son came to himself, he says, let me go back to where I belong. Let me go back. When he came to himself. Beloved, if you don't have this self-awareness of who you are in Christ, oh, that's where the enemy takes advantage. Are you listening? That's where he takes advantage. Listen, that's where he takes advantage. Now, so look at this. Verse 3 of Romans 8. For what the law could not do in that, it was weak through the flesh. God, therefore, did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, on account of sin so that he condemned sin in flesh verse 11 look at verse 11 but if the spirit of him therefore who raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you 
he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The question, beloved, now, is the spirit dwelling in you? Is the spirit dwelling in you? Is the spirit dwelling? Is the Holy Spirit dwelling in you? If the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, then, beloved, be assured that the Holy Spirit will also make a way out of escape. Whatever the situation you are finding yourself in, everybody have issues. Listen, everybody. It doesn't matter what title you have standing in the pulpit. Everybody have issues. Everybody. If you have not been, been maligned already, well, keep living. If you have not been, you know, told lies upon, keep living. If you have not been ostracized, keep living. Beloved, as long as, listen, Jesus says, as long as you are on this earth, you will go through tribulations and challenges. Oh, glory be to God. But he didn't stop right there. He says, rejoice because I have overcome them all. For who? For you. Jesus didn't do this for himself. He says, rejoice. Do not, he said, beloved, rejoice. Why do you have to rejoice? Because Jesus has done it. He did, why did he do that? Because he wanted to bring you to that place of where you actually ought to be. And so scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, I know you are going through some challenges. You know, I don't like this I, this saying, sometimes you hear some pastor who say, I don't care what you're going through right now. Oh no, I do care. I think it's, you know, I, I used to say that myself. I'm confessing to you. You know, you know, you know what spirit makes people talk like that? Self-righteousness. I don't care what you're going through. I know Jesus can do. Oh, yes, Jesus cared. Jesus cared. Jesus cared. Jesus never said, I don't care what you're going through. I'm Jesus. I can heal you. No, he cared and he showed them the care. Oh, my goodness. You see what the Holy Spirit does? Somebody who knew me years ago would tell you that, ah, is that, is this Pastor Patrick speaking like that? Yes. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you, he begins to work. That's what he said. He begins to tear off. You see, like onions. I always use onions as an example. Onions have so many layers. When you peel one layer off, you see another one, there's another one there. That is what the Holy Spirit does. Beloved, that is why you don't have to do the work of the Holy Spirit or try to even do because you cannot. Receive Him and let Him do the work in you. Oh yes, it's me. It's me. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care. I, come on. No, you must care. You don't even know what that person is going through. You don't even know. You don't even know what that person is going through. My goodness, you don't know. No, you don't. This morning, I um, I, I got a call around about um, about um, three, about three, almost three, half, half past three a.m. And um, it was about one of my young boys. Uh, he's passed away. And. Um, I was just thinking, I was just, the, what I was thinking is, uh, because based on the story behind, you know, how he's, he's you know, he, he died, uh, I am just thinking, um, Jesus says, if we eat poisons, we will not die. If we walk on s snakes and, and, and scorpions, they will not hurt us. And from, and I'm hearing, you know, he, he 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 was poisoned, and and, and so I'm I'm asking myself. Did, did I know he gave his life to the Lord? But maybe I didn't do a good job by introducing the Holy Spirit to him. For the Holy Spirit to dwell in him, 
to live in him beloved if we don't have the holy spirit living in us we are not complete oh i dare to say that patricia don't cry don't cry the holy spirit is who we need he will help you look at what jesus said he says the holy spirit will help us when he comes he will help you the holy spirit will help you so i was just thinking mm. so he was poisoned and poison was in him and the poison killed him ah. i pray his, his soul anyway look at verse 11 verse 11 of chapter 8 romans chapter 8 verse 11 but if the spirit of him of jesus who of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you if the spirit of that raised jesus dwell in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit through his spirit who dwells in you through his spirit praise the lord to you anthony um, anthony elisha god bless you through his spirit are you listening through his spirit through his spirit go with me to let's uh, second corinthians oh holy spirit move 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 holy spirit move spirit move over me spirit move over me helmet god bless you all right Romans, Romans second, oh sorry, second Corinthians. We left Romans. We just left Romans, second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter chapter three. Second Corinthians chapter three. Chapter three. All right, second Corinthians chapter three. Second Corinthians chapter three. Are you there? Look, look at look at look at um look at what the scripture is telling you and i um, look at verse 10 verse 10 therefore you always always carry about in your body the dying of jesus christ your lord jesus so that life of jesus may also be manifested in your body always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in your body you have to always carry oh my goodness that is your testimony beloved carry the dying of the Lord Jesus that is the life of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in your body. In other words, be mindful, be mindful of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And don't fall into this line that you are a sinner. And therefore, every seven seconds, every one second, you have to confess your sins. Beloved, Jesus has died. Jesus has died for you he's dead he's done with your sins timothy gazen god bless you all right he has died for you he has dealt out with your sins beloved you are not a sinner yes i said you are not a sinner if you are in christ you see that scripture in is in romans it says now there's no therefore any more condemnation for those who are in Christ in Jesus who is he to condemn you 
who is he who has that that audacity to condemn you who if you are in Christ unless you are not this is where the examination comes in look at look at look at um, let me show you something in um, in first Corinthians chapter 5 all right we'll come back to this one let me show you something in first Corinthians chapter 5 unless you don't know who you are and then you will fall into this this idea of condemnation all right look at um, um second corinthians all right second corinthians 13 no i said first sorry forgive me second corinthians 13 i want to show you something here second corinthians go to chapter 30 the last book of second corinthians let me make it easy for you look at second corinthians all right look at second corinthians the last book of second corinthians that is chapter 13 look at it very carefully verse 5 okay examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith prove yourself prove yourselves now this is what the question is <sighs> do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you Unless indeed you are disqualified. Did you see that? Unless indeed you are disqualified. How do you get disqualified? By not believing in him. By not accepting him. That's where your disqualification comes in, beloved. You are disqualified when you have not believed and accepted Jesus and the, the finished work. Of him on the cross that's where you that's where your disqualification comes in but there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus no condemnation do I want to believe what the word is telling me or do I want to believe what you claim you have seen concerning well but, but see, maybe you are still in the Old Testament and seeing the things that I used to do and you want to bring it into the now of my current lifestyle all right which it's it will not work because if any scripture tells me if any man be in Christ he's a new creation all things I'm gonna show you now sometimes I want it, it you know you get excited you want to go ahead of yourself but I want to take my time and bring you the word of God. So that by the end of the day, you will sit down and start thinking. Again, I told you my ministry is not about the one that will make you feel so excited in your body. And, and, and if this is not even the excitement of your life, then I don't know what makes you excited. So now go back to it's chapter 3 of 2nd Corinthians look at verse 4 and we have such trust through Christ towards God we have such trust that watch this that we have such trust through Christ towards God that not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from God our sufficiency is from God our sufficiency is from God I don't know where your sufficiency is I don't know where your sufficiency is my sufficiency is from God my sufficiency beloved if you are in Christ this is what you need to understand that not that we are sufficient of our own selves because see in that old law in that old dispensation or what you want to call in the Old Testament it was about our sufficiency everything that we have to do to get approval of God's blessings 
if you go to the the the, the most prominent part of the law in Deuteronomy 28 you see it that if you do this God will then will release a blessing if you don't do that then bless, then curse will come upon you both by glory be to God for Jesus coming and Jesus came he says that he says you see what we read that God sent his son to become a sin to replace our sinful life our sinful nature he took it up he became a sin and he became a curse beloved he Bible says that curse is the one who is nailed on the cross curse he took that curse now if Jesus has done that you want to tell me I'm still under a curse no all those <laughs> an old friend used to say that all those divine flashes that you are having those divine flashes those were those were my past beloved are you listening those were the past so you are behind you are behind time just get in the now and begin to see the things concerning me oh hallelujah oh hallelujah not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from God who also made us sufficient verse 6 who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant did you hear what I said of the new covenant not the old covenant the new covenant he has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter i just said that not of the old but of the spirit the whole through the holy spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life hallelujah oh man i feel like i feel like a cheeseburger on this one oh glory be to god Eh? With some biggie, with biggie fries and some good ice cream. Hallelujah. Oh boy, it's in the morning anyway. <laughs> no, but that makes you feel good, beloved. It makes you feel good that, oh, it's no longer my ability. That makes God, all I have to do that, according to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So all I have to do is to show God my faith, my trust and believe in him. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Mm, 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 mm. Let me read that to you again. It's so exciting. Man, I love this. Let me start from verse 4 so that I'll complete that. All right. Chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. All right. Chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. And we have such trust through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Our sufficiency is from God. Verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life glory be to god glory be to god so therefore therefore look at verse 17 okay quickly because of time look at verse 17 now the lord is the spirit the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the Lord is the Spirit. So if the Lord is the Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells in me, then the Lord is in me and where the Lord is, there is liberty. So don't tell me I am under a curse. Don't tell me I am under condemnation. There is liberty. Do you know what liberty is? Liberty is your freedom in this grace dispensation. Oh, I know, I know I'm teaching you well. I know that. I know. 
because beloved if you don't understand the word this inspired word of God to you and me we will be going in circles and circles and circles and circles and anytime we find ourselves in any of this tribulations or challenges or, or, or these mountains that faces us as long as we are on this earth we will be thinking otherwise and that is the platform and the tool that the devil takes to let you think that you are wrong that you are not complete that there is a problem with you that there is a curse from the family where you were born into and that that curse is following you and that curse has come to haunt you and that curse has come to roost and what your father did and that what your mother did and it's through the bloodline so the question comes where is the blood of Jesus that has set you free that which you believe where what what is the blood of Jesus less powerful than the blood of the of your father or your mother is the blood of Jesus less powerful beloved is the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus less powerful ask yourself that why are you believing yes you are believing these things because you are not spending time with God through his word and you are not letting the Holy Spirit first of all maybe you don't know like that some of the disciples said we don't even know about it we haven't heard about the Holy Spirit and Paul have to pray for them and baptize them in the Holy Spirit beloved I pray that you be baptized in the Holy Spirit If you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit right now, beloved, just lift your hands right now, both hands. It's it's a form of surrendering. You know, our our, our modern day when a police officer, you know, can say, lift up your hands. Come on, lift your hands where I can see it. Beloved, lifting your holy hands is in the Bible. Lifting up your hands is in the Bible. The government took that from from the from the from God and up and use it. <laughs> All right. Come on, lift up your hands right now and just say, the Holy Spirit, baptize me. Baptize me. Holy Spirit, baptize me. Baptize me. Baptize me right now. Take control over me. Holy Spirit, come. Live in me, Holy Spirit. Beloved, sincerely. Sincerely. Not just because we sincerely, because when the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, He's a helper. He will help you in, in every area of your life. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We're talking about, I'm talking to you about the fact that the Holy Spirit delivers you. It delivers and He helps. Come on, come on, go right now. Holy Spirit, baptize me. Come on, pray it right now. Just invite Him. Listen, you don't need to be in, with, with, in a place where somebody's knocking you on your head. Yeah, yeah, begin to speak. Begin to open your mouth. And they're hitting you at your back or, and all that. No, 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 no. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He does not force himself. If you invite him, he will come. Jesus says to the disciples, wait in Jerusalem. Wait. Wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Wait. Paul laid his hands on these disciples who didn't know and the holy they were baptized in the holy spirit peter after the holy spirit has come upon him he just lay his hands and the holy spirit just in just there's an impact so when we talk about real impartation it's about the impartation where the, there's a smooth transition nobody need to you know knock you on your head you know speak 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 what and beloved you cannot learn you can't learn the tongues you cannot learn it because then if it's true if it's a true language that is designed for somebody and you learn it then you are learning that of somebody you don't have your own you are not authentic you don't learn tongues if anybody tells you that 
And please don't be in the hands of anybody telling you, open your mouth, 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 open your mouth and, and hitting you on your back and smacking. Listen, I went through that when I was younger. Well, my ignorance of not knowing the word. And maybe you are in that position. But I'm helping you based on the assignment God has given me. That the Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit. Tell him right now, even as I continue to speak, just talk to him. Just talk to him to, to just be, just, just, you need him in every area of your life. I'm telling you, you need the Holy Spirit. Let's read more, some more scriptures. Oh, my time is up. Ooh. But I'll give you, just give you uh, one more, one more, one more. I promise, one more. I know, I know you are being blessed. Please let me know. Can you, can you, you know, some of you, you are, you are just so serious. Can you just give me a thumbs up or, you know, that like thing on that thing? Let me know that you are blessed. Can, can you, can you do that? It, it, you know, it makes, it makes you de delivering the message, the, 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 the messenger, it makes you feel good as well. It makes you feel good. Can you do that? The like, the love, the, you know, all those things, all right? It makes you feel good. Oh, baby, I know you will do that. God bless you. I love you. Oh, let me give you one more scripture. One more scripture. I promise, one more and we finish for the day. Stay with me. In Romans, um, 2 Corinthians, all right? Chapter 5. Look at chapter 5. Chapter 5. Look at chapter 5. Oh, look at chapter 5. Look at chapter 5. Verse 17. Verse 17. God bless you. God, oh! <laughs> God bless. Now, you people know to do all these things and uh, you don't do that. Huh? You don't do that. Oh, well, I love you too. Mm, I love you. I love you too. Hey, mother. Mother, you, you know how to do these things and you don't. <laughs> God bless you. Linda. Oh, Linda, Linda Mensa. Hey, Linda Mensa, which one? Is that the uh, Warden Mensa's daughter? Linda, if it's you, let me know, because uh, let me just give me your thumbs up something. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right, Second, um, Second Corinthians. All right, I promise, last one. Uh, verse 5, chapter 5, chapter 5. Look at chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, therefore, with all that I have said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, all that I have said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone, if anyone is in Christ. Beloved, did you, did you hear that? If anyone, are you part of the anyone's? If you are in Christ, the Bible says you are a new creation. You are created new. That's where you get this born again. You are new. Watch this. All the things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18. Now all things are of God. Now, not yesterday, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their sins or trespasses to them. God was not imputing your sins to you, beloved. God is not interested. You know, let me, let, let me finish it. I'll tell you a quick story. Not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed <clears throat> to us the word, the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Verse 21. 
for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ oh hallelujah that we might become the right so beloved if you are in Christ your righteousness your righteousness yes you are a righteous person yes there's no therefore now no condemnation you are a righteous person you are not a sinner don't be going around talking about I'm a sinner saved by grace I'm a beloved no 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 are you getting this in that old dispensation in that old law in the old covenant that's who you were but in this new better covenant you are not that person are you listening and start living your life as such beloved live your life as such and don't live your life as you are living in the old dispensation beloved and if you do that what you are doing is you are allowing all other negative entities to start pointing fingers at you that you are a bad person you are a sinner you are this you are that you are that all that negative things and people somebody may see then these negative entities they go into the negative mindset of people and 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 give a picture of you negatively to them and then they they get up and then they are seeing you as a somebody that somebody's chasing and somebody's doing that if you are in christ Oh, mother love you too. If you are in Christ. If you are in Christ. Now, this is the story. Somebody died and went to heaven. And when he got there, he saw... Huh, he saw David. He saw Moses. <laughs> he saw Paul. He saw Solomon. He saw Abraham. And it was like, wait a minute. He was asking the angel, am I in heaven? The angel says, yes, where do you think you are? He says, but why am I seeing all these people? David was a murderer on earth. He, he, he was a murderer. He, 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 he was an adulterer. He even slept with somebody's wife and he killed the husband too. <laughs> Whilst he was talking, he saw Abraham. He says, Abraham. What is Abraham to do here? He he lied. Abraham is a liar. He lied. He lied. And, and he was an adulterer too. He slept with, he was married and slept with somebody, you know, the, the maid servant. Look at Paul. Paul. Is that Paul I'm seeing over there? The Paul who was killing the Christians? The murderer? Is this heaven? Look at Solomon. Solomon disobeyed God and slept with this woman that God says don't sleep with this. No, angel. Angel, this is not heaven. He says, well, if you want to leave, this is heaven. So then why are all these people doing here? I thought this is a place of righteous people. And the angel says, yes, this is heaven. This place, we only record the good of people the bad we leave it all down there <laughs> oh you self-righteous you think you are going to go to heaven with your self-righteousness no no there's therefore now no condemnation when you want to immediately you want to start condemning think about look in the mirror and start thinking about yourself God bless you I'm done I gave you extra time because I love you God bless you so if you have not given your life to Jesus you got you want to do that now you want to do that now so that you come into the family where there is therefore no condemnation will be no judgment no accusation nobody i mean who who, who is he we'll get into more work tomorrow please share this broadcast if you love me share this broadcast that's all i ask of you nana yeah god bless you if you love it share the broadcast. if you didn't get the time 
to come on it on time, please um, get it back on the Facebook. I told, I told you guys that I need your support financially to buy this equipment. Now, you can't get this on, on YouTube because, you know, it's not live on Facebook, on, on, on Periscope, on Twitter, on this thing, because I told you we need to get this instrument. And we have not, we haven't heard from you. But I, it's not my position to put any fear in you for you to be a blessing financially to this ministry. No, it's not my place. No. Giving must be from your heart. Giving must be from, from your love, because of your love for, for God. Giving must be because that's it that's it giving must be because of your love for god i'm, I'm not listen I, i'm going to be judged and if i have to lie to you to be twisting your arms so that you can give no yes the ministry this ministry need so that we can be live across and i put that word out there so if you want to you know be a blessing go on the on the on the website www.patrickquenoministry.com you can see a button on there say donate use a paypal to do that or if you want to you know do a um, um, cash app the number is 914-572-9816 you can do that but it is not my place so this is only on youtube now and um, you can get the message on there if you are not you didn't come on there on time in the meantime, the most important thing here right now is for you to give your life to Jesus if you have not done that. That's the most important thing. All that I said, the, but the most important thing, your salvation is more important. Very, very important. So if you don't know Jesus, and if you, if you, if you have also given your life to Jesus, but you, have, you are not baptized, you've not been baptized by the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about being immersed in water as John. That was a baptism of John. Yes, that's good. But you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that you need that you need to you I need to pray for you right now. Are you listening? So number one, if you have not given your life to Jesus, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for hearing this message. Maybe I was just, just passing through the Facebook and I saw this, this, this guy talking about you. And I'm convinced that you have done away with my sins. So therefore, by receiving and believing it, I, you bring me to the place of no more any condemnation of my sins. Make me your disciple. Come into my life. Take full control of my life. You are my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in your book. And now, for those who, who have not also received the Holy Spirit, with you who just received the Lord, just lift up your hands and just let me pray for you. And receive the Holy Spirit. Just open your mouth and just pray. Ask the Holy Spirit. Just Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Just say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, baptize me. I baptize you right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I baptize you right now in the Holy Spirit. Receive this impartation, the transfer of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you right now in the name of Jesus receive him now amen amen beloved if you if you sincerely open your heart to receive because it's about your faith it's about your faith to receive the holy spirit you walk with you he will talk to you believe it write this word believe write it somewhere and always be looking at it that is what the enemy comes to steal from you Believe, believe, believe. If he, if he can steal your belief in God, he has stolen everything. 
and he makes you want to believe anything else like somebody says you know he says if you don't stand for something you will fall for everything and all kinds of doctrines are going all all over the place now all kinds of doctrines beloved receive the holy spirit he will lead you teach you he will help you not only on sundays but throughout the week during the time of your challenge at your job somebody may be disturbing your peace the holy spirit will give you peace in your school you you struggling probably you know in 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 your school and 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 all that and the holy spirit will help you in your marriage hmm, yes he will help you in your family issues your relationship and even the ministry the holy spirit he's our helper mm -hmm. yes i bless you with all manner of blessings from on high well i want you to know you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in god and in all thy getting get understanding see you same time tomorrow